The SKS is one of the most durable and reliable semi-automatic rifles ever made. Created in 1945 to some degrees all the way up until today, there's still some SKSs being produced. It's not just one of the most popular military surplus rifles in the world, it's also one of the most popular semi-automatic rifles in the world, period. And there's a lot of things you probably know about the SKS, but what we're going to take a look at is we're going to take a look at 10 things you probably didn't know about the SKS. Number one, the SKS was invented in the Soviet Union by Sergei Gavrilovich Simonov. A lot of people may know what the SKS stands for, but many people simply don't know how to pronounce it. The actual name of the SKS, Samazarya Ni Karabin Simonova. In other words, the Simonov self-loading carbine. Number two, Sergei Simonov, the inventor of the SKS, pioneered semi-automatic rifle systems before really most other people in the world. Starting his career at Tula Arsenal in 1924, he quickly was promoted to the Soviet Design and Development Program and worked under Vladimir Grigorievich Fyodorov. And Fyodorov created the Fedorov Automat, which was really the first automatic battle-worthy rifle created in 1915. Then Fyodorov and Simonov together designed what is referred to as the AVS-36, which ultimately evolved into the SKS. Number three. Most of the rifles produced by Simonov preceded most battle-worthy rifles like the M1 Garand, the M1 Carbine, the AK, and any of its variants, as well as, of course, the AR-15. Number four. When the AK-47 came around in 1949, its inventor, Kalashnikov, claimed he got his inspiration from the M1 Garand and the German STG-44. Although most Soviet gun historians will say it's definitely a modified copy of Simonov's original AVS-36. Number five. The Simonov AVS-36 utilized the 762 by 54 r which at that period was standard Russian rifle ammo. However, the rim of the ammo proved detrimental to the reliability during rapid fire. That, combined with war data showing most battle engagements happened between 100 and 300 meters. And this brought about the less powerful 762 by 39 which was produced alongside the SKS in 1943. Also referred to as the 762 by 39 millimeter 43, the 7.62 Soviet, or the 7.62 short. Number six. In 1944, the first production run of the SKS went to the Belarusian offensive for battlefield trials. This literally forced the Nazi military into two battlefronts during World War II and changed the course of World War II in Europe. Number seven. During the Cold War, the Soviet Union shared SKS manufacturing and design with its allies, which resulted in many variants produced in many countries, including the Soviet Union, China, Yugoslavia, Albania, North Korea, North Vietnam, East Germany, Romania, Poland, and Bulgaria. Number eight. When you look at all these variants from all these different companies, the SKS will appear very similar. However, many of them are very different, some using gas port controls, different sights, grenade launchers, bayonets. Now many of these parts are interchangeable, but many of these parts are absolutely not interchangeable amongst variants of the SKS. Number nine, of all the variants, you'll find different stocks in different woods. Russian SKS were made with Arctic birch, Chinese with catalpa wood, Vietnamese also with catalpa wood. The Yugoslavians use elm and walnut. The Romanians use some walnut but mostly beech. East Germans use walnut and the Albanians use beech. And finally number 10. There were 83 different countries that use the SKS as a military rifle with over 20 million SKSs produced. This makes the SKS the sixth most produced gun in the world followed only behind the AK-47, the Mauser 98, the Mosin-Nagant, the AR-15, and the Lee-Enfield. So there you go. There's 10 things you probably didn't know about the SKS. I'm sure there's some I didn't mention. Put them in the comments below.
The Mosin Nagant, also referred to as the three-line rifle, is one of the most produced bolt rifles and one of the most produced guns on the planet with 37 million at least. And there's a lot of things you probably know about the Mosin Nagant, but what we're gonna take a look at is we're gonna take a look at 10 things you probably didn't know about this awesome bolt rifle, the Mosin Nagant. Number one. During World War I, Russia, struggling to keep up with production of the Mosin Nagant, hired U.S. and British arms manufacturers, Remington and New England Westinghouse Company. 1.5 million Mosin Nagants were produced by Remington. However, once the Communist October Revolution began, all production of these rifles stopped, resulting in Russia receiving half a million of these rifles for free free for not fulfilling the contracts. Number two, even after being traded out for rifles like the SKS and the AK-47, the Mosin Nagant continues to see use throughout conflicts throughout the entire 20th century and beyond through Vietnam, Korea, Afghanistan, and due to the massive stockpile of these rifles that were used by nearly every Soviet ally at one time or other, there are even reports of Mosin Nagants being used by pro-Russian separatists in the Ukraine invasion right now. Number three, the Mosin Nagant rifle was originally designed by Captain Sergei Ivanovich Mosin and was tested along with two other rifles, one of which was designed by Leon Nagant. After the Mosin rifle was selected, modifications to the rifle were made using specifications from Nagant's design. Nagant, of course not being okay with this without receiving any sort of compensation, filed a lawsuit, resulting in a settlement in favor of Leon Nagant. This led to the development of the colloquial name, the Mosin Nagant, combining both names to give both men credit. Number four, Mosin also originally had an issue with the name of the rifle due to it breaking the tradition of naming the rifle after the constructor when it was officially named the three-line rifle in 1891. Mosin claimed that he was the creator of the rifle and that his work should be recognized, which additionally add to the naming the Mosin Nagant. Number five. The Mosin Nagant was even popular in the criminal world. Criminals would often saw off the barrel and replace the stock with a pistol grip for easy concealment. These rifles became known as Aubrey's Mosins, which comes from the Russian word for sawed off. Although highly inaccurate, the rifles were fairly effective at short distances, which was perfect for their intended use as a pistol. Number six. The Mosin rifle was extremely important in winning the Battle of Stalingrad. Due to the new M9130 variant's extreme versatility, it was perfect for the many different terrains found throughout Stalingrad. The Mosin Nagant worked well in both close and long range engagements, and in the end, this rifle was used to take out 50,000 Nazi soldiers. Number seven. The Mosin is the longest in use bolt action rifle in the world, with it still being used by military forces today. The Mosin has stood the test of time for over 120 years with over 20 countries still to this day using the Mosin Nagant in one form or another. Number eight, the Mosin Nagant has appeared in countless movies. However, the earliest of which was Defense of Sevastopol, which was released in 1911. Defense of Sevastopol is a historic war film depicting the siege of Sevastopol during the Crimean War. The Defense of Sevastopol was also the very first film produced in the Russian Empire. Number nine, the Mosin Nagant's influence was edged out reasonably quickly. By the time the newer modernized M9130 model was released nearly 30 years after the original Mosin Nagant, the only part remaining from Nagant was the magazine spring. And finally, number 10, Spare Mosin parts weren't neglected and were often used to produce other weapons, such as the PPSH-41. Because of the long barrel of the Mosin, it can be cut in half to make two PPSH-41s. So there you go. There's 10 things you probably didn't know about the Mosin Agon. 
I'm sure there's some I didn't mention. Put it in the comments below. The Mauser 98, also referred to as the M98 or the G98, however its true name is referred to as the Guar 98. It is a bolt-action rifle invented by Paul Mauser in 1895. Mauser 98 influenced most modern bolt designs. And there were so many of these produced, and I bet there is a lot of things that you know about the Mauser 98, but what we're going to take a look at, we're going to take a look at the top 10 things you probably didn't know about the Mauser 98. Number one, Paul Mauser is born in 1838 in the kingdom of Wartenberg. Now, Paul Mauser also designed the Mauser Model 1871, which was the very first metal cartridge rifle ever used by the Empire of Germany. Number two. In 1859, Paul Mauser was an artilleryman in Ludwigsburg Arsenal, where he worked as a gunsmith. His very first design was a cannon with its own ammunition. Now, what this started for Paul Mauser was it was at the heart of his design is always to build a firearm with its own ammunition. And that defined every firearm that Paul Mauser made. Number three, following the invention of the Dre's needle gun, which the Prussians used, it was the breech-loaded gun using a needle, today we call it the firing pin, to pierce the base of the cartridge. Paul Mauser set out to produce a turning bolt design, which used a pin instead of piercing the base to ignite. So began the evolution of the Mauser 98 rifle. Number four. In 1867, turning to the Austrian ambassador for sales, it was in Vienna for testing that this concept fell into the hands of Remington Arms, where Remington, at the time, their best design was the 1867 rolling back carbine. But it was patent disputes with Remington that Remington did not move forward with a bolt rifle for quite some time. Number five. The Kingdom of Wartenberg was originally part of the Holy Roman Empire, and was also involved in the conflicts with Napoleon. In 1864, King Charles I of the Kingdom of Württemberg sided with Austria in the Austro-Prussian War, and this proved to be a big mistake. Prussia later occupied most of the northern kingdom of Württemberg. Peace in 1866 and the loss of a lot of land and a lot of money led to the Kingdom of Württemberg becoming part of the Empire of Germany in 1871. And it was right then that Paul Mauser took advantage of this new situation by immediately submitting his new cartridge and rifle, the M71, which became the very first metal cartridge firearm for the Empire of Germany. And Paul Mauser took advantage of this political situation to exponentially grow his firearm business. Number six. As this Mauser bolt design evolved, it was the Model 1898 was designed to fire the 7.92 by 57, otherwise known as the 8mm Mauser. It entered into German service in 1898 as the most influential bolt rifle in all European history. Production between 1898 and 1935 it was one of the primary rifles in both world wars. Number seven. There are over nine million of these produced between 1898 and 1918. Number eight, the 300 meter accuracy of the Mauser 98 was unheard of at the time. Given an eight inch vertical and horizontal grouping at 300 meters with this eight millimeter Mauser, which is better than the M1903 Springfield, which gave 10 inches at 300 meters. Number nine, there are 27 derivative copies of the Mauser 98, including the Winchester Model 54, and of course the Rifleman's Rifle, the Model 70. And finally, number 10, 17 countries used the M98 as their service rifles. Five other countries took the rifle and refabricated into their own versions. Examples of this was the Czechoslovakians, the Ottoman Empire, and Israel who barreled them to fire the 7.62 by 51 NATO. And you could always identify that Mauser 98 that it has both German and Israeli markings on it. So there you go, there's the top 10 things you probably didn't know about the Mauser 98. There's probably a lot of things I didn't mention, if you have any, put them in the comments below. If you like this video, click like and subscribe. If you feel called to support our channel through Patreon, that link is below. But the most important part of this YouTube channel is we take prayer requests. Never hesitate to send that stuff in. Thank you for watching this episode of God, Family, and Guns. And as always, love God, love your family, and love guns.